Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to this month's Dev Talk. We have James and Ian with us today, and they will be presenting on a few different topics, including App Forum. And Ian, I'm going to hand it off to you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. So, yes, yeah, hello. My name's Ian Hatton. I'm a pre sales consultant based in the UK, covering the EMEA market for mobile computing products. And the uh, first slide really is just a, a that we have our App Forum meetings taking place this year. So if you're a developer or you're interested in the technical aspects of our products, then that's a really good opportunity to firstly network with other partners and also to meet Zebra people and to get an update on what we're doing in terms of new technology. So you can see the dates there. There's a link there if you want to register. Obviously the Europe one is coming up pretty soon, 4th to 6th or so. So uh, we'd encourage you to, to register as soon as possible if you want to attend. So what we wanted to do today is just to give you an overview of what we've been doing with Signify in terms of VLC, um, which is basically an indoor locationing technology. And so basically in the last three years, working, originally with Philips Lighting, um, because that's the name of the parent company, Signify is actually just a, a renamed um, version of Philips Lighting. So it's been from Philips, which obviously is a huge company based in the Netherlands. And I is focused on the lighting aspects and in particular on the um, VLC, the locationing side of that. So um, you can see there the size of the company. It's the number one in the lighting sector, serving customers in over 180 cu countries. Um, and they do all kinds of light fixtures. Obviously, a lot of them are LED nowadays, mainly because of the power saving you can get with LED lighting. Um, but as a side of LED, you also have the opportunity to do applications like VLC. And as a quick overview of how it works, basically, when you install LED lighting, um, you have the option, and it's not a standard feature, feature, but you have the option to have um, a number of the lights actually a very high intensity, so you can't actually see it flickering by the, through the naked eye, but if you use a camera on a smartphone device or one of the Zebra devices, then you can actually um, capture a video stream, you can decode the pattern, the, um, the lights dynamically, and that allows you to, to have an ID for each light, which is programmed to transmit a location code. So typically, you would have, say, in, for example, in a retail store, at any one time, the camera of the device will be able to see multiple light fixtures which are transmitting location codes. And it will therefore be able to see, say, two or three light fixtures the location codes of those, and based on a, a map that's been um, preloaded on the, you can know exactly where you are based on seeing those location codes. And it's very, you know, can work down to 30 centimeters. So um, you get really action indoors. Um, you can basically then use that location for lots of different applications, which we're gonna talk about in the subsequent slides. You can see in the diagram, there is um, a server connection. The server is primarily used for license um, because in order to use the Signify solution, you need to have a license. And so when you start up the location API, it goes out to a, a Signify to make a check to see if it's licensed for use in that area. Um, but after that, then basically the, the actual locationing can be done on the device only. It doesn't have to have an external um, in order to work out its location. You can obviously use an external server to provide added value services. So for example, if you want to do a breadcrumb trail of a device in room, 
through a location such as a retail store, then that can be done on a server and you can log that data obviously um, to have a, a trace of the route that the shopper has taken through the store. Um, there is an SDK available for integration into uh, your own app and my colleague James is going to talk about that in a lot more detail in the slides. Um, these are some of the customers which uh, Signify is working with and what we see is there's quite an overlap between their customer base and the customers that we're working with. So customers like Carrefour, Edica, Media. Um, these are customers who are using the solution at the moment. We also have a lot of additional customers who are um, interested in trialing it but haven't actually got to that point where they've to the trials. So it's fair to say this is fairly early in terms of the technology adoption. So there's many live deployments, certainly not with enterprise devices. The deployments which are in the family are primarily with consumer devices. And for example, with ASWARC um, in Dubai, that's using a consumer smartphone to do um, location-based promotions and also do product finding. Um, and that's you know been the main focus initially for Signify, and now what we're doing is trying to expand that into the enterprise market, where we're looking at different types of solutions that can use this very accurate indoor location solution. Um, so if you look at our devices, the target device really is a PS20 for personal shopping. That's where we see the, the biggest value for the solution. Um, you know, if you look at the sort of applications, you can do product finding. You can do tracking of the device through the store. So it's then possible for a, customer, a retail customer to know exactly which route the device follows through the store. You can also measure the dwell times of the shopper at various points in the store. Um, you can do proximity notifications. If you want to do promotions where you know the shopper is near the pasta aisle, you want to um, do a promotion for a sauce, pasta sauce, then you can do that very easily um, and you can do loyalty program integration. Um, staff device, uh, so I should say that if you look at the, the class of products that this is running on, it's all the 660 based products, so that's all our latest generation products, including TC52, 57, 72, and 77, um, PS20, MC90, 300, all of the front-facing camera and therefore have the ability to support this solution. So for enterprises, we're looking at, again, the in-store picking. So if you were doing a, an application where you're doing of uh, internet orders, then you can very easily plot the optimum route or to pick a basket of items so that you can take a worker who's got no previous experience of the store or the store layout and they can very quickly be productive with a device um, because it's basically through the picking operation. Um, product location database, location based work instructions. So that would be, for example, where a manager walks around the store before it in the morning and they basically geotag different locations where you need to perform particular actions. So for example, if there was some spillage on the floor that needed to clean up, be cleaned up, you can tag that particular location and that can then be pushed through a work management solution to a and at some point then after the, the manager's round, they can go and corrective action that's required. Um, also, route to shopper in need of assistance. That's quite a interesting one. So if you're in a big, um, say, DIY warehouse, you need to call for help. Um, basically, what you could do, if, if, for example, you had a PS20 and a fixed kiosk, you could tag the location of that device using the VLC solution, and you could transmit that to a staff device, and that location could be updated dynamically. So if somebody's got a PS20 and they're moving through the store, when they press the 
persistence, they may have moved further on in the store by the time you, you get to them, but this would allow you to really find them at any point after the call's been made. So it's a kind of dynamic um, calling system, which um, would give you a much better level of service than you'd have currently. And then, yeah, basically similar sort of applications on 9300. Uh, ET50 also supports solution, so we can use it on larger form factor devices as well. Just want to show you, just to give you an idea of how it's working, this is a demonstration video of the solution the PS20 and the TC57, and this is in a, a UK-based retail store. If I run the video, then you'll see, um, hopefully you'll see, because it doesn't seem to be moving, <laughs> but um, you should be able to see that as you walk through the store, it's going to show pop-up messages, which are location-based messages. And the blue dot you see on the map is the actual location of the devices as they walk through the store. So you get a very dynamic and very accurate of the device moving through the retail store environment. And these messages could be, for example, if it was a consumer using the devices, or they could be previously geotagged need to have it, some um, corrective action if it was an uh, associate device. So um, hopefully you can see there accurate, as I said, down to about 30 centimeter resolution and a very smooth track of the through the store. So just to, to focus in a bit more on the use cases, um, so in this case, just being able to um, complete the shopping list. If, for example, you can build a shopping list at home, you can load that. When you log on to your PS20, you can recall that shopping list, and this can potentially guide you on the optimum route through the store, pick those items if you're um, doing your own shopping. Um, we can do the same thing for staff store associates in order to do the, the opt for picking online orders. See, that's a, a huge market now in um, different ways um, where people are ordering online and somebody else is picking the uh, the order. So that's a potential use case. Um, restocking takes less time because you can do areas that need to be restocked. Um, and you can also Planogram compliance, again, because you can tag exactly, if you, for example, here you can see a shelf, that shelf may have different products in, located next to each other. Have such a high accuracy geotag, you can actually distinguish between products which are a meter apart. So you can do a very accurate tagging of locations. And you can also, um, basically re reduce loss and misplacement of device because with this solution, say running on a PS20, it can be recording its current location or at least its last known location. So if one goes missing um, or you can locate it for whatever reason, then you'll at least be able to find it, its, its last location using this solution. So that's a summary of the benefits to the retailer. Um, I think we've we've covered most of those. I'm not going to to go through that again, but um, you can see the list of benefits. Um, just wanted to mention we also have a portable demo system, which is basically a full light tripod, which you can see in in the picture there. So it's only four lights, but it's a very portable solution that fits in a a trunk, which we can ship different locations quite easily. Um, so it's quite good if you just want to to show a customer the concept and to um, to quickly demonstrate it in, in then this is a really um, easy way to do that. It takes you know about five minutes to set up, and the only requirement really is that you you use it in a location where you don't have present lighting or 
natural light because that both of those light sources will interfere with the LED. So really this solution requires the whole area to be lit through LED light really to have performance. Um, and that's it from, I think I'm dead on time. So I'm going to hand over now to my colleague James who go through the SDK in a lot more detail. Okay, thanks Ian. Um, so yeah, just as you mentioned there, just going to go through the SDK from a developer's point of view and uh, sort of dive into those two. So just to So just to reiterate what uh, Ian said earlier on in the presentation, just give a brief overview of what VLC is. So it's uh, an acronym for visible light communication. Uh, it's essentially just a medium for transferring data, uh, but it uses visible light as the media, uh, as the medium, sorry, to transfer the data. And that's within a range of 400 to 800 terahertz. Um, and it transfers that using the on-off keying that Ian mentioned earlier and then that light is decoded on the device. So you can see there on the right hand side is an example of what it might look like on a device. So the SDK is provided by Signify. There's actually two of them for two different purposes. There we go. Yep. So the first SDK is the indoor positioning SDK. Uh, this is what actually decodes the data coming in from the lights and it will return you location data. So your latitude, your longitude, your heading and your altitude. Uh, and this SDK is the one that also handles the licensing. So as Ian mentioned, when the application first starts, it's gonna have to go off and confirm its license with a server. And this is the SDK that handles it. Uh, they also provide a secondary SDK, so this is for the maps, uh, which can be used to plot the user's location, define some geofences, and then listen for the enter-exit events on those geofences. Uh, you can also set destinations and provide route into them, so you can imagine navigating around the store as provided by the maps SDK, and then you can also arbitrarily draw annotations over the map as well. Uh, I do want to mention though that this secondary SDK, the maps one, is completely optional. If you wanted to as a developer, you could implement the same functionality yourself. Uh, the SDK provided by Signify essentially just takes the legwork out of it for you. So there's some pros and cons of that, but we'll get into that later. So moving on then, we will first go into the uh, indoor positioning SDK. So to start with, there's a few prerequisites, some of them quite obvious. So obviously the indoor position in SDK will have to be integrated within the app. Uh, you'll need access to the device's camera and subsequently the user will have to grant permissions for the camera as well as the location and services. Um, the device is always gonna need a line of sight to the luminaries as well to be able to use VLC. Obviously, if it's in your pocket, the camera won't be able to pick up the lights and it won't be able to decode your location. Um, there will need to be some form of connectivity as well, either Wi-Fi or cellular, so it can download and validate the venue data um, and it will run on Lollipop or newer. Uh, the last thing there as well is that you would need a configuration string, which is provided by Signify for each installation, and that's just to do with validation. So just to give a brief overview of the architecture here, uh, the infrastructure in terms of the luminaries are obviously provided by Signify, um, but the venue owner is the one who has to provide the connectivity, either cellular or Wi-Fi. Um, then the indoor location library will use the camera to interface with the VLC fixtures and determine the location. Uh, and then that, uh, SDK or library will then connect to a backend so that it can perform your configuration and licensing checks. Um, the application will also use the uh, core location functionalities within the device as well. And then lastly, as Ian mentioned earlier, you can also integrate it with a backend server of your own making uh, so you can utilize it for whatever you want. So for example, location-based product lookups and things like that. 
So just to give an overview of the components, it's not just uh, VLC that provides the location in, in this library. Uh, it uses a combination of four different location in methods. So it's just to make it more robust and to allow it to function in certain cases where VLC isn't available, such as it being in your pocket. So these four location and methods are the first ones, obviously VLC. The next one is pedestrian dead reckoning, which we'll go into in a second. Uh, Bluetooth low energy and also the core location services. So that would be the GPS on the device. So firstly, the core location, as I just mentioned, is uh, using the GPS, Wi-Fi or 4G on the device. So obviously for the PS20, which doesn't have cellular data, that would be Wi-Fi. Uh, and it uses this method to get the initial location of the device. So you can imagine being inside GPS isn't gonna be too reliable. So this is just somewhat of a fallback location and method if none of the other ones are available. Uh, moving on to BLE. Uh, BLE is obviously Bluetooth low energy. So we can install beacons in the saw to supplement the VLC functionality. Uh, they would either be used when the device can't see the luminaries or there's some other reason that they won't be able to use it. So for example, if there's natural light interference or something along those lines. Um, the interesting thing with this solution though is that the beacons can also be installed directly into the luminaries and powered by them. So you wouldn't have to go around installing them independently if you didn't want to. Uh, lastly, this also provides location in for devices which aren't supported. So if they don't have a front facing camera or their architecture won't allow the library to be run on the device. Uh, moving on then is pedestrian dead reckoning. So pedestrian dead reckoning essentially just uses the gyroscope and accelerometer on the device to approximate your location if it can't use either GPS, VLC or BLE. Uh, so obviously this will be quite rough, quite inaccurate, but uh, again, it's just another method of making sure that you have some location in if all else fails. And then finally, the main one, what we're talking about is VLC and uh, as mentioned before it uh, just decodes the lights from the luminaries and uh, it's hyper accurate so it can locate you to within 30 centimeters accuracy and it also provides your orientation not just your positioning. So if we start going into the APIs then, um, the SDK itself provides uh, an indoor positioning class so within that class we have methods for doing three things in general. The first one is configuration, so checking your license. Uh, the second one is an interface, so being able to listen for callbacks on the location and events, for example, when your latitude and longitude has changed or when your heading has been updated. And then obviously for starting and stopping the location and service itself. So generally this would be initialized in the onCreate method of every class. And it's important to note here that this can't be used in a service, either foreground or background, so if you wanted to use this in multiple pl places throughout your application, you're going to have to manually configure that in each and every activity. It can't be run in a service, not at the moment anyway. So if we go into the configuration, um, so we have to obviously configure the SDK to match our environment. So to do that, we need to do three things. The first of which is setting the configuration ID, which is the first line in the example code down there. In fact, the second one, sorry. Um, this configuration ID is just a base64 encoded string and it will be provided by Signify and it's going to be specific to your installation. Uh, the second thing will be defining which orientation the device will be held in. So this is important to let the library know how to best calculate your heading and how to display that on the map. So obviously if you're going to be holding the phone in a portrait, you would just tell it portrait and vice versa. And then the last thing is the positioning mode itself. So there's three different ways or three different modes we can use for positioning. So the most common one is the default, which just sets it into its production environment settings so that you can basically use it in a store. Uh, the other two are more so for testing. So we can also simulate uh, movement or the user's location. Uh, and we can simulate the user's location with movement as well. So that's just to allow you as a developer to be able to test your application without having to physically get up and walk under lights every single time you make a change or you wanted to test the feature, for example. So moving on then is the 
uh, interface. So the interface just has three callback methods, one for when it's updated your heading, one for when it's updated your location, and then a final one to let you know if there was any errors. So if uh, an error is thrown, that automatically stops the positioning, and obviously you're going to have to deal with that as a developer. So the first method there is the heading update one, which will return you a map which has three keys, which you can see in the top right hand corner, heading degrees, heading accuracy and heading arbitrary north degrees. And you can get these all as doubles. Um, and we'll go into how you plot that a little bit later on when we talk about the maps SDK. Uh, the next one there is very similar. It's just the location updates. Um, so pretty much the exact same. You can see the uh, keys that you have inside the map. Obviously you've got your latitude and your longitude. There's a floor level as well. And so if you have these lights installed on two different levels inside your store, then that's what's used to uh, differentiate between those two. It provides an altitude and then it also gives you its accuracy values. So you can see uh, how confident the library is in the location that it's provided you. Um, just to mention there, the heading updates will be uh, provided 30 times per second generally, and the location updates will be provided 15 times per second. So you can imagine with that sort of data, the plotting of the user's location on the screen is incredibly smooth and it tracks very well. And then finally is the error method. So this is uh, an error is thrown when did fail with error method is called and you can see there that the uh, error is an enum and it has several constants that it might return. So for example, you might not have access to the camera or your location it might be disabled and then you can just handle those with a switch statement and perform whatever logic you think necessary. So if the location in is off, perhaps you can prompt the user to re-enable their location or send them to the settings screen so that they can do that. And then uh, lastly is just starting and stopping the location. So again, this can't be done in the service, so it needs to be done in every single activity, which means that we need to start and stop the location and at some point during the activity's life cycle. So there's two steps to do this. First of all, we need to register uh, the listener, uh, passing uh, an instance of the interface and a handler so that the interface is run on the main thread. And then we can just call start or stop respectively. Uh, usually this should be done in the on pause and on resume callbacks of the life cycle um, could be done elsewhere, but not recommended. And then finally, uh, just a quick overview on the licensing, the login and some privacy aspects. So this has come from Signify themselves. So the licensing is managed by providing a GUID for each venue, and that's checked with the server at runtime to ensure that it's valid. If that license isn't valid, the SDK won't operate and it probably won't throw you an error either. So that's just something to note. Um, in terms of logging, the server will log a trace of user's location and it will log all error messages. So that's for to provide analytics and remote support, but it never stores user data. So all of that data is completely anonymized and they wouldn't be able to link it back to you. Um, and according to Signify, all of the data is maintained in the region which it originated. So that's it for the overview on the indoor position in SDK. So just moving on, we'll go into the, into the MAPS SDK. So just a quick overview. It's used to simplify the process of displaying, configuring, and interacting with the map. Uh, the map file that you need to use with the SDK has to be created and configured by Signify. So if you use their SDK, you're tied into their mapping and you would have to go to Signify for any changes to the map or the creation of the map in the first instance. Uh, so again, just to reiterate, this is completely optional. You don't need to do this. Uh, it just takes the legwork out. So that's one for the developer to decide. So just to give a quick overview of the APIs itself, uh, it provides a pre-built fragment, which is a map fragment, which contains all of the functionality that you need uh, to be able to create and display a map. 
So the, it provides the ability to load a map file just by passing in the location of the map file on the device, and it will return you a Java object, which you can then perform uh, operations on, such as plotting a location, monitoring the geofences, annotation overlays, routing, things like that. Uh, and that fragment, again, is loaded into the activity at runtime. So we'll start off with the most important thing, I would say, is loading the map file. So again, to reiterate, it uses a custom map file from Signify, and it has to be created by Signify themselves. Uh, the map will be loaded asynchronously, obviously, because we don't want to block the UI when we're just trying to load the map file itself. Uh, and this can be done just by calling the load map function on the map fragment and passing through the path of the map. Uh, we also pass through an instance of the on map ready callback, which will be called when the map is ready, and it will pass us an instance of the map object. And again, the map object contains the utility methods for interacting with the map. So I would recommend storing that as a member variable of the class. So going into actually using our location, um, to plot the user's location, um, we use the interface that we discussed earlier from the indoor positioning SDK, the one that provides us with all of the location and data. And then from within there, we can just use two methods, one set user heading and set user location. And we simply pass in a location object to both of those methods to be able to plot that on the map. And then the map will handle that completely all on its own. So very simple, taking all of the legwork out of that for you. Um, creating geofences. So there's a slight difference between um, traditional geofences, so to speak, and the way that Signify have implemented them. So rather than just taking a central point and then drawing an arbitrary radius around it to create a circle geofence, which is probably the most common implementation, uh, this SDK uses a polyregion. So a polyregion requires a minimum of three different locations. So to create, at the very least, a triangle but you could obviously use as many of those points as you wanted to create whichever shop you wanted, uh, whichever shape you wanted. So if you imagine you wanted to create a geofence going around the corner in an L shape, that would be quite easy to do. It's not something you could do with a traditional geofence. So um, once we've given it our locations, we need to tell it which floor we want it to show those geofences on, and we can assign it an ID as well. So that's optional, but that's very handy if in future, say, you wanted to navigate to a particular geofence or perform a certain action depending on which geofence has been entered or exited. Okay, so. Once we've created our geofences, we also need to be able to monitor them as well. So to do this, the MAPS SDK provides a region monitor object. And this object contains free utility methods for monitoring the geofences. Um, the first one is set trigger time. So this defines the amount of time or delay that you want to have between the user entering a region and the callback being notified, so letting your application know that they have actually entered that geofence. So that might be useful for examples. Um, a promotion, you don't want to just bombard the user with a promotion as soon as it stands next to the pasta, for example, but if you can see that they've been dwelling there for around 20 seconds, then perhaps you want to pop up a message there and sort of prompt them or give them a bit more information. Uh, the second one is to set the region monitor listener. So this is just a method to pass through an interface so that we can be notified when they enter and exit the region, which you can see down there on the bottom right hand corner is the interface. And then lastly, the add region method, which will add the geofence that we've created in the previous slide to the region monitor. So once it's been added, to the region monitor, provided that we've given it an interface in the set region monitor listener, and we'll be able to be notified automatically when the user has entered and left. Um, yeah. So moving on then as well is uh, the SDK also provides the ability for routing from one location to another. And again, it makes this incredibly simple. So all you have to do is just call the navigate to location method and pass through the location that you want to navigate to. 
and then to stop the navigation so for example when they've reached their destination you just call stop navigate to location to stop navigate and that's pretty much all there is in terms of the sdks um just uh, to put up here this is our contact from signify so if you had any particular questions you wanted to ask them directly he would be the best person to go through so that's simon Donnell, and he works in the indoor positioning department and those are his contact details there so i think that brings us to the end of the presentation there really so if you had any questions be happy to answer them all right, Dev Talk attendees, thanks for joining today. If you have any questions, please put them in the questions window, and we'll take a moment here to see if any show up. All right, I don't see any questions coming in. We'll give it another moment. James and Ian, is there anything else you'd like to finish off with if we don't get any questions? Um, nothing in particular, Mark. I just want to mention also, um, particularly if you are based in the UK, we are in the process of installing a demo system in the Zebra Experience Centre. is in our office in Bourne End, just outside Marlow. So within the next weeks, hopefully that will be fully completed and then we'll be able to demonstrate the solution with approximately 25 light fixtures in the ZEC. So make it much easier to show potential customers how it works. And the question is that we'll have, you know, a number of different applications. Started with the PS20 with a shopping application. That will allow you to do um, product finding. Um, so you can basically enter a product and it will show you the map to that product in the, the room. Um, but we'll also do some demonstrations around as well. So that should be coming hopefully by the end of this year, we'll be in a good position for demonstrating different applications with this solution in, in the UK. Great. We had a couple of questions come in. One of the questions is, what is the max distance from fixture to device? Mm, good question. Let me pass you to Jay. Um, that is a good question. Uh, I would say uh, that, so in terms of distance, it's going to be more to do with the, the height uh, that the light is away. If you're not standing directly under the light or if you've uh, encountered interference, from other sources as uh, all gonna have an effect on the distance itself. Um, but for a regular installation, if the entire store is uh, covered with these luminaries, then the distance shouldn't really be an issue. I think Signify recommend that the luminaries should be around 1.5 meters above the ground. Um, so that would be ideal, um, but you're just gonna experience slightly less accurate results if you go further than that. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how far uh, or how close you would need to be for the VLC functionality to be working, as it's quite hard to tell when uh, other elements of the software starts kicking in, such as BLE or PDR or the core location and services. So yeah, uh, 1.5 meters would be ideal, anything more than that, and you're just gonna see a reduction in accuracy. Okay, uh, just to add to that, Mark, um, you know, in the typical ceiling heights you have in a retail environment, it's not a problem. I mean, healthcare is another market we haven't really mentioned, but in a hospital environment, you know, the ceiling height there wouldn't be an issue. I mean, it may be a problem, it would be if you were in a warehouse where you tend to have much higher ceilings. If the lights were, you know, located, say, several meters above the device, it may start to, um, have an issue with the location accuracy, but for the typical, you know, in retail and healthcare, it's it's fine. Okay, 
So we had a couple other questions come in. This one uh, was just following up on the beginning of, of the webinar. Uh, was it necessary to change all the lamps in the shop? Yes. So when this is installed, you know, the, the, one of the main drivers for changing the lights is the energy saving, because when you move traditional fluorescent lights to LED, then you typically get at least a 50% energy um, So you can make a ROI calculation based just on savings, you know, and that will cover the cost of the installation. Um, but in order for this to work, you need to change all the lights in the facility for LED, and then a number of those lights, not all of them, but a number of them will be enabled for location as well. Okay. Do all location methods need internet access and license? Um, no, well, the internet access is primarily for the um, license check. So, yes, you would need a path to the license for that to succeed. But once you've done that, um, I mean, it's completely independent, um, but it does an occasional ping of the server as well. So, the idea with this would be that you would have to open the firewall on the facility to be able to contact a licensed server um, initially and, you know, occasionally after. Okay. How many lamps are needed for covering 100 square meters? Oh, that's a good question. So, you typically, you wouldn't have them closer than a meter apart. And, you know, when we do trade shows with the usually two meters, one to one and a half to two meters apart. So, out in my head, but maybe a hundred, maybe less than that, between 50 and a hundred. Okay. So it looks like all the questions we have for today, unless we have another one pop in. Um, with that, I'll look to close off and you can certainly follow up with us if you have any further questions and check out our developer portal, developer.zebra.com. James and Ian, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to conclude with today? No, not really. Just say thanks for everybody, to everybody for hopefully see you at the app forum meetings in whichever region you're working in. And uh, feel free to contact us. Um, I don't know if our contact details are there. But via the, the developer portal, you can post questions on there. If there's any follow-up questions that, that you need to ask. Okay. With that, we're going to close down this month's Dev Talk. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Stay tuned for future Dev Talks. And we hope to see you at App Forum. And once again, don't forget to check out developer.zebra.com. So with that, we're done, and we hope to see you all real soon. Take care.